Hey, traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here. It is uh, February 13th. And hello, everyone. So you guys can hear me, I assume. Got a bunch, got a couple questions here. Um, Pooja, yeah, I will. I don't know why it would go to that um, name. That's weird. Um, but I will shoot you an email later and we'll figure this out. Um, Robert says, is it, me, is it me or have the markets been seriously hard and everyone last six weeks seems like the only way technical analysts work? Press it to the opposite. Yeah, I'm kind of with you there. Um, it's been certainly a – what we're going to do in this webinar, um, I actually want to take a step back. I've done this a couple times, uh, especially over the last couple of years, and try to figure out what in the heck – it's going on and we'll talk about some conditions and try to get a bigger picture um and yes kieran <laughs> dollar cat driving me nuts yet yeah, me too i'm with you on that um yeah absolutely driving a lot of people crazy no doubt about it all right so yes everything's driving me nuts robert uh, robert i'm with you everything's driving me nuts too so you are in good company my friend so all right says uh, maybe revisit the dollar DXY short buy it says Leon yeah I mean yeah it's been it, it's been okay for hitting levels here and there right like we got like some levels and you know Aussie for example right came up to 7138 last night um, but it's like you just kind of have to hit like little tiny uh, little tiny trades here and there because nothing like really sustainable is is there or working or whatever. Um, and I guess unless you're long the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. All right, so let's start. I want to start with real quick. So I don't, my, tr my trading view is um, for some reason not really working right now. I have to get that figured out. So we're just actually going to do everything on TradeStation today. So here, quick review, step back, DXY, the longer term picture. Okay. Hit this resistance many times, November, December, breakdown, okay? The drop is not clearly impulsive. The rally could be corrective, but we're not really sure. We don't know, right? Um, if we go back and we take the retrace, we're a hair below the 618 from November and December, which is also, we don't even need it because we know that that's also the high from June of 2017. All right. Um, so we have been brushing up against and coming off of resistance for some time now, and uh, we're getting back closer to it. Not a whole lot of clarity there, obviously, right now. Right. But just kind of want to pinpoint where we are longer term. Now, near term on the daily chart, looking at this fork or channel, as we can call it. Right. We've got. Parallel parallel center line okay center line center line center line center line yesterday reversal um but we haven't really followed through on that of course and we are still just we're sitting there um you know i look i don't have strong opinion here one way or the other as i mentioned this drop is not clearly impulsive by any means um is it corrective? Maybe. Is this corrective or is this the beginning of an impulse? Are we in a third wave higher? Uh, if I throw on just kind of levels to watch or another level to watch near term, right? It would be this right here, this parallel right here, which was support back in September, support on that drop uh, on January 1st. All right. You kind of rode it for a couple of days here in January. So that's a level that's going to be like 9650. OK, that's a level to watch that probably corresponds to roughly 11390 in um, in euro. All right. Which, if you you know recall from the post, I guess yesterday is kind of the level I was thinking to watch. Um, you can see euro right now is 11288, call it 11290. You know, so no real, um, you know, just no clarity. I mean, that's 
kind of that that's that right no clarity so what do we know we know that we're sitting at resistance here we know that 9650 should be a level to pay attention to for um you know potentially for some support in dxy if we got there then you know maybe you'd be looking at support in dxy resistance in euro uh until then it's really just for me it's sitting it's waiting see and, and watch and, and whatever um U.S. dollar. All right, let's go to U.S. dollar, which we've been looking at on linear. It's not a whole lot of difference um, from linear and log on the near term. On the on the uh, the longer term picture, we look at it this way. This long term trend line. sitting just above it, right? Now, when I look at this, let's do a quick review on what happened here. Let's go back to log or linear scale though. All right. Marco says, how many long periods? Oh, there's been plenty. The one that stands out the most, though, is the period back in 2014 um, when everyone was kind of waiting for and thinking that we were going to get this big dollar rally, euro rollover, and it just wouldn't happen. And then finally it happened. You had the biggest trend ever. Um, maybe that's maybe we're at the opposite period of that now. All right. So let's look back to this. So DXY or sorry, US dollar. If you go back to 2015, all right, resistance, screwed around support, resistance, and we've been brushing up against that now for, again, since November, okay? Um, now, when we look at, and of course, we have this parallel, which is the one we've been focusing on uh, for a long time. You had the gap down through it. I thought that was finally it. Maybe we'd finally get going. Didn't happen. Um, and now we're right back to it. Okay, let's go to the daily chart. So in the case of US dollar, this drop is impulsive. It is five waves, one, two, three, four, five. And to me, the best count that I can come up with is that um, Aurelian, uh, yes, asking about update. We will get to Kiwi and Aussie, no doubt. Um, so don't worry about that. Five waves down. And then we have another impulsive rally. So that's why that's confusing to me in the sense that we've already retraced a little over 618. We're actually sitting right at the 618 right now. Um, and, you know, we're pretty extended. And if you look at a longer term, again, a longer term chart, or sorry, a shorter term chart, not longer term. you know, clearly an impulsive advance, right? So when I look at, um, at DX or US dollar, another thing that stands out is that the yearly opening price is pretty important here, right? That's where we opened, okay? You can see it right here, resistance, 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 support, not precise, not to the tick or anything, but we have been, you know, messing around on it for a while. Um, so that's a level to pay attention to there on 12, 2, 1, 3. I would also say that if you did pull back from here, 12, 1, 8, 1 is going to be a level to watch. All right. And that would be about half of the rally. So 50% of the rally up. All right. So we're at resistance. Does that mean anything? I don't know. We pulled back yesterday, but here we are. We're still here. Um, so, at, you know, I came into the week saying I was looking for us to roll over because we were at resistance in DXY um, and US dollar. 
but at this point, that's just not happening. Um, we started to roll over here today, um, or yesterday, I should say, but the, you know, we haven't followed through. But that doesn't change the fact that we're still at resistance. Okay, so that's all I've got to say there on DXY and US dollar. It's not predictions, it's just an observation that we are at resistance and I'm kind of looking for us to pull back some here. All right, um, I want to go to some equities. All right, so the S&P 500 gone through pretty much everything, it seems like, right? Like literally everything. Um, looking at the near term picture of this, I mean, it's awfully extended, right? I mean, it's just beyond extended. And if we go to the, you know, say an hourly chart on this, actually, before we get to an hourly, why don't we focus on the levels here? So, you know, we've gone through the 200 day, we've gone through the 618. 618 all the way down here. You know, where does the thing, where does, where, where, where does stuff change? Frankly, I think that at this point you have to get all the way under 2710 um, to think that you have something working on the downside in the S&P. Um, that's the low from 1011. It's also near the 618. It's also the high from 127. It's also the gap from 211. So Monday's close, which is at this point the uncovered close. Okay. Um, beyond that, the next level I've got is all the way up at 2802, 2814. Um, you've got a number of highs up there, right? Go all the way back to last March. You've got a high there, right? You've got all that support that goes back through July. You've got the high there from December 3rd, uh, which is the December high. And you've got the 786 retracement of the entire drop, which also is basically right at the 11.7 high and the 10.17 high. And yeah, so, you know, do we go all the way to that level before we have anything decent on the downside? I don't know the answer to that. Um, we've already gone so far. In fact, yesterday I did see DSI on S&P, I think was 78. Um, so we're getting awfully close to what would be considered really extreme, or not really extreme, but extreme being above 80, right? Above 90 is really quite, quite rare. And we were all the way up in the 90s up here. We got to two down here and now we're almost close to 80. So, I mean, that's pretty crazy um, in that short amount of a time to have those, that number of extremes. Kieran saying, what is DSI? So DSI is a daily sentiment index. Uh, it's published by a company called tradefutures.com. Um, I would, if you want, if you're interested in it, uh, just look up DSI trading or something on Google and you'll, you'll come across it. It's essentially a poll of traders, of futures traders, of short-term traders. And uh, it oscillates between essentially zero and 100, but really it's like one in 99 because it really never goes to zero or 100. But um, yeah, that's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, a sentiment indicator. Okay. So, all right. So here we have the possibility of going at least 2,800 plus, but if we did, man, that would be a huge level um, where you'd expect us to roll over. At this point, we've already exceeded the 200 day. You get below there. You're still not out of the woods yet. I think that you need to go below 2710 to have anything decent on the downside. Okay, uh, let's zoom in on this to an hourly chart and see if we can get some sort of wave structure or something. All right, so five up. Okay, so one, two, looks like a three here, even though, you know, three itself isn't all that five y, if you want to say, you know, it looks like, but whatever. Let's just look at the broader picture. One, two, three four 
and now we have five. And five is in five. One, two, three, four, five. Now here's the question. Is this five of five in five? One, two, three. Is this a little four and a five? Or is it, are we gonna get a pullback and then go up for another run? That's another reason why I say that 2710 is so important, right? Because if you look at a closing basis, if you get down here, you'd be overlapping this wave one. And at that point, you'd have to say that you're probably done. Okay. Um, so that is where we are at when it comes to the S&P. Um, would like to, if we can turn over now and drop to 2710, then you've got to say that it's over and that we're going for a deep retracement of this five wave rally, which would put you somewhere. Initially, you'd be looking down here at the former fourth wave low, the 2611. OK. So one thing at a time, but I don't think there's any argument here or that we're not mature in this rally. Right. You've even got this underside of this trend line right here that you're pressing against on a short term basis. Um, so, yes, very, very, very risky place to be long stocks, in my opinion, at this point. I know I've said that before, like over here and even over here. But at this point, we are at an awfully elevated level level with lots of evidence of, you know, mature patterns, five waves up, multiple degrees of trend, right? Five up from here, five up from here, five up from here, potentially, right? We don't know if a pullback leads to another high. This to me looks good enough to be finished, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned. So, all right, so we've got that. Let's go to the NASDAQ composite. Now the NASDAQ composite, and I don't know if this means anything or not, but it could, um, has been much weaker on a relative basis as far as the recovery is concerned um, compared to the decline, right, than say the S&P 500. Because the S&P 500 has, you know, already exceeded, well exceeded its 200 day average. and far exceeded its 618, where the 618 here, we're actually pretty close to it. The 786 would be all the way at 7718. So you still have, and we're still in this pretty, this important zone uh, that's bracketed by the January high last year. Um, you can see the resistance levels here and also the December high at 7486. High today so far is 7461, almost 7462. All right, let's go to the hourly chart on this one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, right? So the short-term counts are pretty much identical. And I would again say that, um, you know, 73, probably 7310, um, that gap right here is 7308. That would be the level, excuse me, the equivalent level to the S&P, um, you know, in 2710 that we'd be wanting to see, you know, give way if we were to um, have some sort of a, a more important decline underway. All right. Well, let's go to the Dow. The Dow has actually been the strongest. Uh, in terms of its recovery in relation to its drop, probably partly because its drop wasn't nearly as large um, as the S&P or the NASDAQ, right? But here too, you've got the 786 at 25,830. And you've got, you know, with that, you've got the February high from last year, February 27th at 25,800. So basically the same level as the 786. You've got a series of support levels around there too, back uh, the support in September before you went higher. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, 60 minute chart. Same pattern, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, right? In this case, 
is a pull, is this enough for a five? Is this one, two, three, little four, five? Or do we pull back and then go for one more run into that 25, eight, you know, level before we actually get something sustainable on the downside? Something I will point out too is the, you can see the retracement levels of the decline from, um, from October, okay, actually are really good. They've been really solid. So here's the 38.2, you can see it was support. Here's the 50%, you can see it was support. The 618, you can see that was support. That was on Friday. Uh, and the 786 is just up here. So to me, I guess the major question is, do we actually end up getting to these longer term 786 levels um, watch the Dow specifically because the levels have seemed to work out and proven important, um, or more so say than the um, the S and P and the Nasdaq and their retracement levels. Okay, so you might want to watch the Dow uh, the closest, right, in terms of these levels. So that is, you know, that my quick and dirty when it comes to the S and P and the Dow and the Nasdaq. All right. Okay, let's, what I want to do now, like I said, I want to look at some longer term charts, um, and then we'll get into specific FX related shorter term uh, levels that we're looking at, okay? All right, let's go to this weekly workspace. <clears throat> All right, Euro. Nothing's changed from the last couple of comments. Um, the euro, you know, 113 is clearly important. Um, it has been really since the election, uh, the, you know, the, the Trump election over here. So that was a spike high. It was then resistance in June of 2017. It was then the level for, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> for the breakout um, a couple of weeks later. It was then support, right? August support in November, we nipped, you know, took it out in November, late November, got above it, took it out in mid-December, got above it, took it out in late January, got above it. We've taken it out again this week. The question is, how do we close the week, right? Do we close back above it and set the stage for yet another false break? Or are we finally going to get a flush and trade down to the next level, which is essentially 111? Um, that's the June 2017 low, and you would have a little line connected off of these. So that would be right here. I guess also something that I'm wondering is like I'm trying to because the pattern to me is just so unclear. Um, you know, when it when it comes to let's take a naked chart here and throw this up. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of all the indicators. When you look at a daily, you know, you've got a one, two, right? Probably a three, four, five. From that point, there was a lot of options, right? We had maybe three waves up A, three waves or a five waves down. So this could a whole thing could be A, B, C, or this whole thing could be a one. This could be a four and right here. We will look at gold, no doubt. Um, but ever since the market's gone essentially quiet, like, you know, kind of from the low and really choppy, it's just been, it's really been unclear to me what's happening. I have no, um, strong opinion on pattern at this point really the only thing to watch are the levels here um you know if you get back through the you know 114 level maybe there's something to work with until then you got to say that euro is vulnerable at the same time sentiment is just terribly in the toilet like uh, dsi yesterday on euro was 10. okay i mean that's pretty extreme um or two days ago at the low, I should say, was 10. So that would have been after Monday. But back to our long-term chart, you know, the momentum here is all 
also not been extreme on the downside by any means. Um, we've kind of have this, this is the kind of momentum profile where the RSI continues to try to bottom all, you know, around 30, around 40. This is more indicative of a longer term dip in a longer term bull market, right? You can see that when you look at previous instances of RSI on a weekly chart, okay? What happened down at the lows back here in 2016, 17? RSI was bottoming around 40, right? Above oversold, 40, right? Think of the opposite situation. What happened when RSI was rallying during 2016? We were topping up near 60 and then we went lower. This was after an oversold condition, right? Think of the opposite situation is that, uh, again, uh, I believe it was Marco asking, uh, how many times in your experience have you gone through such a long period of unclarity in the FX market? It does remind me a lot, Marco, of over here in 2014, okay? We had a similar thing going on where, you know, the where RSI uh, on the weekly chart, you were rallying up, you were hitting resistance, okay? You got came down and then you had this, choppy 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 rally with divergence and you know reversals just like we've had here divergence and reversals but the market would never really roll over right but at the same time rsi was topping out below 70 and topping out near 60 okay and finally the final kiss was after you finally turned over with rsi at this 60 level it's really quite the uh direct opposite situation of what we have now Right. So back then we had a rally on really weak momentum. OK, we had a, um, you know, divergence reversals. Right. This time we have a decline on really weak momentum. OK. Marco says twice in five years doesn't seem much. No, it's not. But of course, there's always periods of, of a lack of clarity. Um, what I'm saying is this has been the most extreme lack of clarity since this point, at least in my opinion, in my experience, okay? Um, so maybe to work out to try to time this too, look what happened back there, okay? I have these little short-term averages are 10 and 20 week averages. Um, and what happened back then? You were kind of going below, you know, finding support. Once we finally broke it, and then found resistance on the 10 week average, that's when we finally got going. So that's why I also would say, look look where those averages are now. They're 1380, 1400. That's the level that we said we were gonna pay attention to anyway. So that sets up for a possible situation to the direct opposite of 2014, or if we can rally back up above it over here and then find support on the 10 week average, then you've got the situation where you can have a master, you know, massive long i said master massive long position okay so looking at these longer term averages weekly charts um trying to understand the conditions and the opposite and trading through this and being through this over here understanding the opposite of the conditions that were present back here you know it really does um you know really does help to understand context right get away from the shorter term charts right see the so-called as they say the cliche with the forest from the trees and all that jazz so with euro i think we know where to look okay if we dump all the way back down into 111 so be it we'll see but if we can turn up and break up through that 114 figure okay and then eventually find some support back around 1380 14 then you've really got the seeds there for a bigger long position okay all right, let's uh, move on to dollar Swiss. So I know it was, who was it saying in here talking about dollar Swiss? Was it, was it Leon? Who was it? Oh, I can't find it. We were talking about dollar Swiss. Someone said, look at dollar Swiss. Maybe that's leading the way. Possible, okay. Um, dollar Swiss is a really difficult market to grasp and has been for some time. When you look at this, you've got to say, man, this looks crazy bullish, right? Um, you've got this massive head and shoulders. At the same time, we've got the same, you know, terrible momentum that we've had, right? With, again, more divergence um, here, here. It would be divergence this week if we close up here this week. I don't know if we will, it's only Wednesday, um, but we'll see. 
and also um, simply having kind of, you know, what could be a wedge-like pattern, right? So there's many, many interpretations. Leon, yes, it was you. So there's several interpretations, okay? This could be a wedge that leads to a final overthrow, maybe up near 10170. In that case, likely to get that 111 figure on Euro, and then we'll see. Or I guess you could have a giant, giant basing pattern that takes you all the way up to 110. Okay, at this point, we don't have the answer to that, and there's no sense in trying to front run it at this point. Okay. And again, you have to go with the sentiment here too, or make that a part of your process because sentiment towards the dollar has been really bullish for quite a, you know, quite a period of time. Um, you know, we're close to single digits in um, Swiss sentiment, um, which is typically not seen before you have a big Swiss decline, in this case, dollar Swiss rally. <clears throat> British pound. If we're finding some sort of a low here uh, in cable, again, we said to look at that 28, um, 15 area, right? You've got the high there in the 50 day average, 10 week, 20 week is right here as well. Um, so yes, pay close attention to what's going on here with the pound. I'm still not all that enamored with trading the pound, given the fact that um, it is, you know, Brexit galore and, and, you know, kind of shockers coming out of left, left field and right field. So either way, here we are at a big level. We'll look at the shorter term charts a little bit. Leon says, still say DSI works more in hindsight than is accurate as timing. Well, I mean, that's true with anything, um, but if you use it as part of your tools, I mean, you've seen us talk about plenty of times um, on here, whether it was back, whether it was back at the high last year, a year ago, um, we identified that high pretty well. Um, we identified some lows over here pretty well in June. We identified some lows in uh, in August. We identified lows back all the way back in, in, in uh, November of um, 2017. And I do remember specifically talking about DSI then. So yes, does it always work? No. Um, of course, it's going to work better in hindsight, as they say. That's 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 just the nature of of anything. But I don't think that's a reason to um, dismiss it as a tool. Yes, yes, not a holy grail. There is no there is no holy grail, right? We all know that. So just a tool, not a holy grail. Absolutely. All right, let's go to dollar yen. Okay, so dollar yen. This is the 20 week average. 20 week average was support on the way up been talking about looking for resistance, so to speak, on dollar yen. Um, it's clearly a little bit early in talking about looking for resistance because we've gone about 40 pips through it. But something um, that I would keep on the burner here is essentially 111.40. So 111.40, 111.50, pretty clear. 20 week average was support throughout 2018. Okay. Um, it was support over here before the break. Let's see if we can get some um, big resistance up there. It's also the low from October. It's also the high from May. And you can see all the trading that you had on it throughout uh, the summer of 2018. So do we need to go all the way up to 1140, 1150? You know, let's think of how these types of moves or trends tend to end. Um, well, that would be, you know, getting up towards that 111.40, and you could have a spike in there, uh, potentially during Asian hours or something. Uh, Robert talking about, do you have an ABC correction to get 110.90? So actually, Robert, I want to go back to um, the long-term page here because...
this is kind of what we had anyway, right? We were looking for maybe an E-wave rally. Um, and I wrote this, so that is what we've got going on. So period of sideways to higher in wave E could complete the triangle before larger wave C begins to unfold for 93.80, 94.80. So going back to this chart, it's, you know, stands to reason that 11140 is really big. Now you are at a level now from that low, that weekly low uh, from December, which is also weekly low from September. We're 11080, we're 11080. So you can say that we've really entered the first very important, um, you know, bottom of, a, of an important zone, okay, when it comes to dollar yen, all right? Um, again, we will go to the shorter term charts in just a bit. I just thought it would help because clarity really is lacking right now to look at some of these uh, longer term you know, charts and levels. All right, let's go to Aussie. Now, Aussie, frankly, I've actually had a pretty good handle on it, I think. Um, we had one or 71.38 is a near term resistance. We traded 71.36 last night. You know, the question is that short term picture, have we finished, you know, the C wave down or do we have one more stab down to, you know, maybe 70, 20 or even, you know, 69, 80 or something like that. But let's keep in mind what's happened here. Right. You've been in this long term downtrend. OK. You undercut the lows from 2016 on a flash crash that occurred on the first day of the year. Right. You have divergence on the low. You have the massive, massive reversal. Um, that type of thing kind of smells like a low to me, right? Or a bigger low, which is why I think it makes sense to look at Aussie the way that we are, right? A, B, C, the question being, did four, is this four and five or is this four and this is five, okay? Let's go to Kiwi. Posted a weekly last night of the New Zealand dollar, and essentially you've been between, you know, basically 66.90 and 67.30 and 68.60 to 68.90, you know, for the better part of you know a year so the 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 coiled nature of this market is extreme to say the least um I'm getting some positive momentum momentum readings here the last couple of weeks we do have us trying to establish about the 10 week okay that's fine um in terms of near-term pattern nothing's changed i think that we're probably in a very large triangle that's been going underway or underway since um you know, since December, which means that you basically want to fade, you know, kind of the range extremes. So we did have 68, 50, 60 as resistance. Uh, it indicated last night, you know, it's okay to try to trade that short term. Anything more than that, you know, I don't really think is, is worth it at this point. Um, and now let's go to dollar CAD. <clears throat> Now, dollar cad's one that I could see us with more of a rally, right? Um, several things, 50, 200 week uh, are right below support or the lows, I should say. And you've got a positive momentum profile on the weekly. OK, so that would be, again, RSI going overbought and RSI pulling back but finding support or making a low prior to getting down to 40, okay? So this is what we would call a longer term positive momentum profile, all right? Okay, so we have our longer term view um, and kind of some context. Let's see if we can zoom in and look at some shorter term stuff. Okay, so you already have got what we talked about with Aussie. 
you know, we've got resistance, we hit resistance. Um, I'm not really interested in trying to short right here. Uh, you know, this type of thing, you have to kind of like literally short right at the level with a really tight stop. Um, there's just too much that could go wrong here in terms of the dollar being at a level and it's just not something I'm interested in doing. Not to mention if this was the bottom of wave five and let's not forget that we did hit the yearly opening price on um, Monday and we did reverse higher from that immediately. That's the kind of thing where you tend to see, um, you know, a more important turn, right? That's uh, a pretty big deal, at least the, is the, in the in so far as the way I look at things. All right, Kiwi, guess what? It also hit its yearly opening price. Actually, missed it by two pips. We were looking for support on 66.90. So here's the update for Kiwi on a shorter term basis. Um, triangle. First of all, you do have five waves down here, so you actually would be looking for additional weakness. Uh, we did hit initial resistance at 68.50. As far as I'm concerned, near term, you know, you want to see kind of probably a three wave move up if you're setting up for a short. So that would have us with an A here. Look for maybe a B wave low down at 67.85. 67.86 is 50%. And I will get, Leon's got a really good question and I'm gonna to get to that. Um, but yeah, near term, I'd be looking for support at 67.85 on, uh, on Kiwi and probably resistance, maybe all the way back up towards that 69 level, which is near the, um, near the month open. Remember, if you're in a triangle, pull, pull in that triangle chart, If you're in a triangle, you don't really want to trade in the middle of the range. Uh, at least that's my belief. You want to trade more on the edges, and that would put resistance more up here, right, and support more down here. So we've kind of been trading off of levels that haven't been ideal to trade uh, around the ranges because, you know, look, we didn't get down to support. We were looking for 66.90, the support line, right? It's okay. You don't have to chase every, you know, little move that you think is going to happen. And now dollar CAD. So dollar CAD, decent short-term levels, right? Identified a resistance at 33.25.40. I uh, was thinking we'd get support more or less on 32, 32.20. Didn't really happen. We got a drop down to 31.96 last night, but we have turned up. This is one where I'd be willing to sh uh, take a, a shot on the long side, okay? Because again, you do have that longer term um, momentum profile that's bullish. Uh, you do have longer term support under it um, from the averages, and you at least have some short term, um, something to work with as in an impulsive rally and corrective decline. You've retraced 50% of the move up, okay? This morning's rally, by the way, stopped right at a high volume level. Uh, you close back above that, 32.58, I'd say we'll take a shot on the long side with a, stop, with a relatively tight stop, probably below 32.15, and see what we can get out of it, because that could be a pretty good move, right? You could be looking at a move, you know, even equal legs within a range. I mean, you could be looking at moves all the way back up to 34.50 or so. All right. So that is on the table as an option to play long dollar, right? As much as I don't really care for it because I do have dollar resistance. But, you know, if we look at just this setup or this pair on its own merits, then, hey, why not? OK, um, you know, it's there. The risk is tight. So be it. Dollar yen. Let's remember um, our longer term thing that we talked about, which we identified basically 1140 as a really big spot. Well, guess what? 1140 is also very close to 200 day average, which is 1129 right here. OK.
Other than that, don't have a whole lot to offer with dollar yen. This to me looks like a three up, three down, three up. Let's see if we can get a measurement on this on a four hour chart. See potentially where we get the equality between legs. It's you know more or less right up there. So if you measure from here, which is probably the right way to do it, 11.33, that 11, um, 30, 40, you know, 11.30, to 40 areas looking mighty, mighty important when it comes to dollar yen, is it not? I mean, absolutely significant. So let's really focus on that. Now I wanna to get to a question that Leon just asked because I think it's a really good one. He says, if a flash crash candle for Aussie implies a long-term bottom, wouldn't you also have to say the same for dollar yen? I think that's a great question. Um, in a quick answer, no, because let's look at it in context. The Australian dollar has been declining on, you know, on a long-term downtrend since 2011, okay? You've got a drop, consolidation, all right? Drop, consolidation, drop, long consolidation, drop, testing the lows, flash crash. And keep in mind, you know, other things that have happened around this time, like copper has gone through a long-term downtrend, copper is on support. Um, longer term support, which we identified in a, in a number of recent posts. Copper hit recent or near term support actually just recently. Um, and let's look at dollar yen. Dollar yen hasn't really been in any sort of a trend, frankly, um, you know, over the last three years. We've been sideways for quite a period of time, which is why I have us kind of in this large triangle, right? A B, C, D, higher and E, okay? So could you be correct in that this flash crash indicates a longer term bottom? Absolutely, it could be, right? I'm not saying that it's not. Um, I think another way, here's another example to look at. So you remember back in August of 2015, that was the Chinese markets um, kind of crash, if you will. And that was the revaluation of the yuan. Um, and there was a big panic. And in the U.S., you had what they kind of called was like an ETF flash crash type of thing. Well, that was a flash crash. And it really did. It indicated a temporary bottom, to be sure. But it was not the bottom. In fact, we were closer to a bigger high than we were a bigger low. Right. Because of the context, what was happening? We were coming off of a big high after a big rally, after a big trend higher. Right. It was not after a prolonged downtrend. My point being is that longer term uh, lows, right? When you get a flash crash, if you've been declining for a period of years, in this case, we've been going down in the Australian dollar for you know eight years, um, I'm more likely to believe that that is some sort of a low rather than the flash crash simply within a range being some sort of a low, okay? All right, so let's continue on um, with questions. There were, I know there was a question on gold, I believe we wanted to look at gold. So here's gold, uh, still pretty much for me, the same thing that I had a couple of days ago. I'm looking at, the parallel that is from the original channel uh, back to August. Okay, so you've got here, you know, here, and basically looking at 1304.90, 13.05. Okay, I would suggest uh, to when you're looking at gold though, to make sure that you look at it in conjunction with um, with silver because. <clears throat> The silver chart actually, I think, is a little cleaner. Okay. And that this parallel, which was clear resistance and then beautiful for 
kind of a takeoff rally, if you will, in December, um, and then consolidated around a support, um, you know, late Jan, then took off again. That level is again still around 1552 or so, and that looks to me to be, you know, kind of clean or important as a, you know, more so as opposed to gold being 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 as important. So watch that. Uh, so if you're watching gold, be aware of like 1552 in silver, which is front month is March. And Leon saying, yeah, you know, long term count for Aussie may or may not play out is the 40 area, 2008 low around 6100. Um, 2011 high is 40. It, yeah, I mean, you know, look, it, it could be. I'm not saying it can't happen, right? Um, trying to just weigh the evidence that 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 we're looking at here, frankly, uh, and. You know, flash crash, possible, you know, double bottom, whatever, taking a 2016 low. You also have so many divergences. Like, you know, you've got that huge flash crash low in in um, in, in, in Aussie, but, you know, we didn't have that in silver or sorry, in silver, in copper. Copper actually did kind of the opposite thing. So, you know, you had this low back here in copper and copper had this big move up. And Aussie didn't do much at all. Um, and since then, you've got this possible kind of base in copper. Now, I will say you've got five waves down, but even then, you'd expect us to get a good three wave advance. And copper in the near term looks okay. Okay. Say, so let's look at oil. Sure thing. All right. So, oil. Uh, you remember on the long, so I don't have that longer term chart because my trading view is a little screwy, but um, when we look at oil, remember 56 was a big level for us and we did get to 55.75 on the front month contract. Um, it's really, you can see how important the level is that we came into. You know, you've got all this consolidation back from 2017, right? Consolidation here in late 2017 before we took off on the upside. Um, near term, we've actually come into resistance. That is daily reversal resistance right here at 55 or 54.56. We hit it today, 54.60. So, you know, I think that oil is in a period of consolidation. Like you've got this possible big bottoming pattern here. Um, and we may very well take off on the upside, but I would look for a little more sat sideways in oil, maybe one more leg within the consolidation. And I'd look for support at 5241, which is going to be the close from 211. That's daily reversal support. So that's what I'd be looking at when it comes to oil. OK. So bottom line is oil kind of favor the upside on oil. Um, but as it pertains to tactics and, you know, very near term, I would be paying attention to 52.41 for support within the range. OK, at that point, you would also end up having, you know, kind of a five wave um, deal going on within the consolidation. Let's go to an hourly. Seven waves down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, is probably the best way to count this. And you could be completing a small five wave advance now. One, two, three, triangle, four, five. And then you're looking for a pullback and a higher low against this low, against the corrective low, right? Looking at measurements can help you kind of understand this as well. So if we measure the first three waves against the second three waves, guess what? They're equal, almost exactly equal, right? A, B, C, X, A, B, C. OK, now let's look at a 618 from where you got a high today, presuming that we come into pretty good resistance. We said 5240. Well, guess what? 618 is 5252. That is a big level to pay attention to for support in the crude oil market. OK. So that is my belief is that you probably do have, you know, a positive crude market. Let's remember that we are in very positive seasonals for crude oil up through essentially April um, and, you know, kind of want to be on the buy and the dip 
um, train when it comes to crude at that, you know, dur during this time of year, but especially when it combines with coming from longer term support, you know, a nice long term base near term. I think you've got the chance to buy crude at 52, 40, 50. If it drops to there, stops are pretty tight. All right. So hope that helps looking for clarity, right? We're I shouldn't say looking for it because that's a bad way to put it. We're just, we're waiting for it. We know it'll come. It always does. Um, you know, the question is, are we going to, um, are we, are we going to get a dollar breakdown or sorry, dollar rally and a Euro breakdown down to the 111 area first, or do we get over that 1380 to 114 area and establish what I think would be a longer term base at that point, right? At this point, nothing's answered. As I sit here and speak to you today, we are trading right at 112.90, okay? Leon says long-term year goes below one. Maybe, maybe. Some awfully bearish talk. I'm just trying to go, I'm not trying to go with beliefs at this point, I'm trying to look at what I know to be, uh, you know, conditions or environments that lend, lend, you know, lend itself to larger turns in the market, right? And I went through it earlier, but all the divergence and even the relationship of the averages and all that stuff on the on the weekly chart really does remind me of back in 2014 before you had a massive decline, okay? So we'll see. You may be right. You know, if you are, hopefully we're along for the ride. Leon says environments look at fundamentals in the in the euros. Absolutely. They're terrible. There's no doubt about it. They're absolutely awful. But it's been awful for a long time. That's not, you know, they've been they've been terrible and the euro still can't break down. You know, so that's what I'm saying. It's like, what's it waiting for? Where, you know, where fundamentals in the Eurozone have been terrible for a prolonged period of time. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, thank you all for the, uh, you know, for attending and um, I'll get this archived. Hopefully, you know, we get some clarity here as we uh, get deeper into the first quarter. You know, I don't frankly care which way the dollar wants to go or whatever, but uh, I would just like to get you know catch on to a move here right um you know i'm agnostic i know it doesn't seem like it but when it comes to the dollar i'm fine taking long dollar setups i think dollar cad could be one of them right we talked about that here you've got good weekly support you've got good uh short-term structure impulsive rally pullback that could be a really good spot to play uh for a bigger dollar move in the very near term all right Yes, Leon, I do. I completely agree with you on that one, saying financial repression has created really horrible trading, uh, lack of 2A price. Yes, it's been absolutely brutal. No doubt about that. You know, you look at how the markets used to flow and ebb and, fl you know, it, it was beautiful. It was a symphony. Um, certainly, ever since the financial crisis, all the meddling by central banks has certainly made it a much more difficult game, in my opinion. Um in terms of, you know, kind of finding freely flowing markets. I was hoping that after Pal kind of changed his tune uh, or Pal came in, you know, he seemed to kind of step back on that or, you know, all that, all, all the meddling. But I guess after he saw the stock market go down, he capitulated and we got into the Pal put. So, you know, what have you, but still we have to, you know, pay attention to, our, our levels and our indicators and do what we, you know, feel is in, you know, the best interests of, uh, based on the conditions that we, that we observe. All right. Okay. Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. Have a good Valentine's day, Robert. Thank you very much. Have a good Valentine's day with the missus. All of you out there have a good Valentine's day if you celebrate it and, uh, I'll talk to you later. All right. Take care. Bye.